getting faster is the one that everyone has got to be obsessed with. How do you go about training a sprinter or someone within a sport to be more reactive? Not just maybe at long-term speed, but even that, that quickness. So number one for quickness is, is your ankle stiffness. How much, how much you, you can lock up your ankle? How does your ankle stabilize well? And number two is how well it connects to your glutes. So that goes through your, goes through your uh, hamstring, goes through your calves, and it'll go through your glutes. Very important dis distinction is that these areas like the calf, glutes, and core, they are all fascial compartments. Okay, fascial compartment means that you could build up pressure. And one of the very common issue for footballers is calf pain or compartment syndrome. But that's why they cut holes on their, on their socks to relieve pressure because they feel too much, right? But if you can optimize your fascial connection, guess what? The signal will be so strong, it shoots over the calves. It will directly be going to your glutes and core. The pressure will be built up there. And that's naturally how your body is supposed to optimize. So when you run fast, your core will be pressured so much that will stabilize your spine upright. And if you look at any sprinter, when do they start to win? Is it in the beginning or towards the end? It's always towards the end. They start to just, their speed just build up, right? The speed, the, the, they, don't, they, don't, they don't, actually they don't lose their speed while the other people, they start to lose their speed much more. And these people, just, they're like sp springs all the way. And recently, you know, Gold Gold from Australia, a very young, 16-year-old, just broke all records. And he he is, he, he might be the next Usain Bolt in the world, right? And look at his body type. Did, do we see any big muscles? No. Again, there's no big muscles. But I bet you a million dollars, if we do the elevated talcro test, he's going to feel in his, in his glutes right away. <laughs> so... This is making me think of, uh, we've had on uh, Ben Patrick, uh, and he's a Rotos guy. Uh, you familiar with his work, let's say. I I'm going to throw out some things from, from what he has sent and bring it all back to what we were talking about. He sent me the, there is an elevated, you do a squat at, at an elevated position, obviously bending your knees down and your, your glutes go beneath your knees. So, so it's like a Hindu squat. Just yeah. Like, with a heel, heel raise, you squat down. The heel, yes, the heel is raised on a, on a platform and you, and you squat down. Exactly. Right. It's just a right. ramp, a little small ramp, right? There's one, all right? The yep. Nordic, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah, of uh, course. Okay. Then, we, don't do, we don't do any of those. Okay. Okay. Well, this is why I want to, this is why I want to, I'm going to throw it out there because I want to, you know, uh, the Nordic, that, uh, the uh, monkey foot. Are you familiar with monkey foot? I have a 10 kilo set up to this. This yeah. is the monkey foot. No, we don't do, I understand. We don't do any of that. Okay, and then the last one is the tib, the tib raise. Yeah, that's the muscular contraction of the tip. We don't do that. Okay, so you do none of that. No, I find that. this very interesting. So now with those, that would be let's say uh, a whole host of things <coughs> recommended in order to do this. So you do none of those, oh. and you do only, uh, well, not only, but you have a few exercises specifically that are. Uh, from what we just talked about. The jumps, the elevated tail curls, and the fascial rolling is also very important because you need to move. What's fascial you, rolling? Yeah, so fascial rolling is, is use, using a tennis ball or something something firm, but not too hard to roll the body in the various different muscle groups, like the plantar fascia, the calves, the hamstring glutes, and various parts of the body, TFL. And what you're trying to encourage your fascia to do is act like a sponge. So you can it's, it's called to increase the global fluid exchange. So you have metabolic waste within the body. And you also have good cells like hyaluronic acid. You also have, you know, myofibroblast cells. But these cells need to exchange. So when you when you're actually doing the fascial myofascial release, what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase the fluid movement. We know a very very uh, old saying called stag stagnancy breeds pestilence. It means that if you're stagnant, it will cause disease to occur. And that's a very good reason, uh, understanding of the human body. Every day, you don't know what your body is doing, but every day, all your blood has to circulate. Lymphatic system has to circulate. You're, you're a gigantic fluid of circulation, okay? So by doing that, you actually increases all the cells, cellular exchanges. You're getting rid of the waste, waste cells. 
you, it increases the fluid exchange. So this is very important to your fascia health. That's also one of the basic things that we do to train our fascia. When you're saying fascial rolling, though, is that taking the ball and just rolling my foot on top yes. of it? Or is that like trying to pick up the ball with my toes and like move it? No, or just no the fascial rolling is to just that, just to roll the, roll the ball on the plantar fascia. You can, you can do it horizontally and vert, vertically as well. Because some people, they will find that they have fascial distortions that are overlapping. So you have fascia, which is very thin, and sometimes half the size of your hair. So they could, they could overlap. So then if you roll on the, on the side that are overlap, you can actually gradually change the fascial structure. But of course, you need new cells, which is, that, which is what we talk about, the malfibroblasts, to help you remodel all these fascial connections. So uh, where does that put us then when I'm trying to jump higher? Jumping higher is actually a much more complex uh, bomb mechanics than, for example, just getting you fast. Because jumping higher also requires you have good glutes to core connection. So that means your fascial connection has to be at a different level. That's why we, in our system, we have a spectrum of athleticism of four different levels. So the first level is, okay, you, this person just don't have anything. You, you do elevated talk rolls, nothing happens. They're just the foot fatigue. And some people, they have problems. They couldn't even do up to two minutes. They couldn't do it. Their foot okay, was so not that, moving. That was going to be my that was going to be my question. Like, how how long are we talking about here? Like, what's the average person and what's an elite person doing? Are they have five minutes that just like no problem. I can yeah elevate or yeah. like what? Yeah. So so that's a good question, right? So you have to have clinical experience to know that. So the the let's say elite level athlete like our athlete who you know world champions you can they can do it like forever there's there's no fatigue like 10 minutes 20 minutes you can you can do that but as an average person to do or somebody says you know my son is not performing well we did all these the training but he's not performing you know, he's still very flat-footed and very heavy on the foot and cannot you know cannot perform cannot run fast well does your son can your son do two minutes of elevated talk rolls oh he cannot if her foot is burning already like by a minute well that's neurological and fascial degeneration Right, so that's just the one, just one piece of measurement you can you can measure. Right now, let's let's talk about the hyperbolic hop. Now, for that exercise, my champion can do single leg, two minute forty five seconds. This is that thing you were talking about with yeah, the spring your... G on a single yeah. leg. Right now, average okay. people they cannot do a minute. Also, when they do a minute, they will also feel the calf too much. No, so. So it's not really about exercise. It's really where this pressure goes or the connection goes. You do a two minute or a one minute, does it go to your glutes when you do the single leg hop? Oh, it does not. Then the, that's, not, that's not good. The, op- op- the fascial connection is not good. If you don't even use your glutes on the single leg movement, how do we expect you to use your glutes when you run and jump? Doesn't happen. Now, now let's go back to your original question about Vert- vertical jump, right? So because everyone has a different level of fascial connection, how they sequence their joints based on the ankle stiffness will influence how they actually jump, which muscle groups being used the most. Now we understand that the quad is the antagonist to your posterior chain or the hamstring and glutes. So a lot of people, they try to go to the gym and try to do a lot of heavy squat. They, you, you are seeking really short, short-term short gain. You never will match the elite level athlete. Anthony Edwards and those people with, with 40 inch naturally and jump so high, and Michael Jordan, LeBron James, they never need to lift anything to jump like that. It's because they are developed naturally from the foot to the glutes. So when they jump, they can fully, they can have much better relaxation in the antagonist groups so that the posterior chain and the core can actually fully fire and express itself and they can move their whole body vertically up especially one of the most common things in the nba when you're talking about vertical jump usually an nba athlete utilizes skill the most is that they drive into the lane they don't have to bend their knees they can take off from the core now imagine somebody who never experienced this fascial connection how do i not bend my knees and use my core to jump they don't they cannot fathom they cannot understand how that works because they don't have the connection. But you have to gradually build that up to the glutes first. So your speed goes up and then to the core, you build that up. Okay, now you can use your core to sequence the jump. 
now you're floating. We also have a a, a champion decathlon, a junior champion decathlon from Netherlands, Gabriel. The reason that he's able to perform without lifting any weights is because we build up this fascial connection. So are you, do you recommend no weightlifting? 